Uh, hi, uh, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, about uh, kernel image formats, uh, mostly related to U-boot. Uh, I'm going to so, uh, so a couple of goals for this talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about. Uh, so is my is my voice loud and clear, everyone? Okay, thank you. So so, so some of the goals for this talk. Uh, I'm going to discuss about uh, existing image formats, uh, the limitations, uh, you know, whatever's out there. I'm going to talk about uh, multi-component images. Uh, some support for that has been added, where you can embed uh, like a RAM disk, a device tree, all this kind of stuff in, into a single image. I'll talk about the challenges and the limitations. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll talk about how some of these problems have been solved, and I'll talk especially about the fit image format, uh, which is what this talk is mainly about. And I'll, I'll discuss how fit uh, solves some of those issues uh, in having like an image that has uh, multiple components uh, embedded in it. Uh, and of course, a bunch of other advantages of the fit format itself. Then I'm going to talk about uh, applications uh, where fit has been used, uh, you know, um, especially about uh, secure boot, verified boot, and things like that, and a whole lot of other applications. I'm going to talk about um, the ad other advantages you know, of potentially using FIT in your applications, and talk about future work and uh, all the challenges we're, uh, challenges, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, having, uh, having this stuff accepted. So, um, So I'm, gonna, so I'm gonna start with the classical image formats. Uh, so especially start with the Z image format. And this is what it basically looks like. There's a, there's a header on the top there that contains some magic number and some other fields. Uh, there's some code in head.s that does some initialization. Uh, um, this decompression code uh, that that actually uh, has the has the has the decompression logic that uh, takes the kernel payload and decompresses it. So this is what it looks like, and uh, so the, the it, so this format is like very limited uh, the way it is. Uh, you know, there's hardly any information about uh, the kernel itself, what architecture it, it has, and you know, there's really no support. Uh, out of the box of embedding a DT uh, device tree uh, meaningfully in this format. Uh, you know, there's no checksums for data integrity and you know, a bunch of other limitations. It, it has a few kernel, uh, uh, it does have a few uh, kernel uh, decompression algorithms though. And so uh, along, this, along this line, you know, there's a format called DTB image, uh, which was uh, added to PowerPC and uh, it does have some support for uh, em, you know, appending, uh, embedding a device tree inside inside of the image, um, you know, and this is, has been proved useful for uh, systems that don't s support passing a device tree from from bootloader or the firmware. So again, this it really hardly talks about what the what the kernel is uh, about, and you know, its, it's load address. There's there's no uh, there's no checksums. There's uh, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So it's very limited in, in the way it is. Uh, and so, so now we come to the simple image format, which is just like a DTB image format, but it can be executed anywhere in memory. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, this is for systems that can't pass anything to the kernel at all. So all the information required for boot has to, has to be... Uh, Present in the kernel already, and including the the arguments and all that kind of stuff. So this was useful for uh, systems that it could pass nothing to the uh, bootloader, uh, not uh, not only a, a device tree, but like literally nothing. And again, this is limited. So here, are few these are few image formats that you know are very limited and in what they can do. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. For for ARM, we have uh, some uh, you know hacks that. Uh, Basically, uh, support uh, appending a device tree to to the to the to a Z image, and uh, you know this was added quite some time back, and it has a bunch of drawbacks. Really, uh, you know the data that is appended at the end of the kernel is really no notion of what it is. Someone who looks at the image doesn't know what, what it is really. 
you know, and you can only embed one DT in this in this way to a Z image, uh, and that makes the the image only a single platform. Once so you can't take the same image and boot it across multiple boards, so because you've already uh, you know embedded a device tree into it, so. And, uh, and uh, though, this, uh, though there is boot support, you know, code has been added to head.s uh, to support this. Uh, but to build this, there's really no, no code. I mean, if, if a device tree is appended, uh, you know, the kernel can uh, detect that it has been appended and uh, you know, do what is required. But there's really no, as such, build support. And you really have to build, append that device tree yourself. So it's a bunch of limitations. So uh, now coming to uh, U-Boot's image format. So uh, U-Boot's image format is really uh, operating system architecture depend independent. You can specify those in the header. You know that information uh, supports a bunch of compression types. It has checksums, CRC. You know it's really good. You can um, ensure the integrity of your kernel image. Has execute in place support. So there's a special type of field that tells you that okay. Once you load the U image, directly execute uh, the, the the kernel code directly uh, from within the U, U image and don't copy it anywhere else. So support for that. Um, yeah, this is a, quite a quite a bit of metadata. I'll show you in the next slide on on what the kernel is about and things like that. And the, the U image format is very efficient to parse. When it was introduced uh, 13 years back. Uh, systems were, uh, you know, didn't have much processing power, and you know, having a fixed size header was really meaningful. And U image was uh, very uh, lean, and uh, you know, uh, it was efficient to parse. So, so this is what it looks like. Uh, so you have a bunch of. So this is so the the stuff in blue is like a fixed size header. Uh, you have name, architecture, uh, you know. Uh, the, all that kind of stuff. Um, you have a timestamp that uh, allows you to do things like uh, rollbacks and stuff like that. You have a magic number that tells you uh, uh, what um, what type of image it is, and you have a bunch of other fields. Fields uh, you know, where to load the kernel in memory, uh, what the size of the kernel is, kernel payload is, or where to jump, uh, things like that, and. It's, it's not limited to kernel, of course. Uh, you can have a, you, you know, uh, this same image format applies to, like, you can build a RAM disk image or uh, a bunch of other things. So it's not really, though I keep saying kernel, it's, you can use this for uh, many things. Uh, so, uh, so that's what it looks like. So this is how it works. Uh, so hopefully my clicker works. So, <coughs> So, you, uh, so this is, in a nutshell, this is what I dropped a bunch of fields because there was no space. But uh, t typically, in a U image, uh, what uh, what U boot does is uh, it it takes the takes a payload and it it copies it uh, into a, a location specified by this field in the header. So it takes this and copies it here, and then it just does a, a jump to the entry point location and it just executes it. So all this happens. Uh, all this happens with the with the bootm command. So you just say bootm, and then bootm passes this header up here, and it, it does the copy uh, that I mentioned and execution. So uh, and, and yeah, this copying is not really required. And uh, you know, for image types that do in place uh, kind of booting, the, the you know the, the jump is directly to the payload itself. So it's not really required and in, in systems that uh, you you have not 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 boot not flash for example where you want to directly jump you know uh, you, this mechanism is not used but uh, i've seen this used quite a bit and you know this kind of copying to a location and then jumping to the entry point is what what happens you know so yeah and this is a command that you can use to to see what the contents of the u image are um, shows you all the details there. So then, then we come to multi-component uh, U-images where we have the notion of embedding more than one component in the in the in a U-image like a device tree blob, uh, you know, uh, RAM disk and things like that. And uh, so, 
So what were the limitations of single component image? I mean, you users wanted to embed like more than one component, obviously, all in a single image. There are a lot of use cases, and that cannot be handled. And you have a bunch of other use cases like uh, booting through DHCP. Uh, you know, you want to pull just one image. You want to like pull like three different components, and then you know from different locations. Kind of messy. Um, and then for recovery of systems, where uh, you know you want a RAM disk, uh, it's it's kind of nice to have have all that inside of the image itself, right? So, so you don't want to mount your root file system. You want to directly go into a RAM disk with BusyBox and stuff. So that's kind of one of the applications possible. Firmware upgrades, uh, it's not easy to download multiple co components. Firmware, like vendors prefer to, give, uh, to have just one image that just works. And even security, like uh, there's no support at all, even in multi-component images actually uh, that I'm going to talk about. But FIT does have support for security, where it was thought that it'd be nice to embed the cryptographic signatures inside of the image itself. Um, and that's not just not possible, uh, you know, with uh, you know, with these kind of simple image formats. So I'll talk more about that. So the this is the this is what so the type field I was talking about here, you know, has to really say that okay, I'm 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 a multi-component image, and so that is what this uh, macro is about. Uh, and that's how you would knows that okay, uh, you know, there might be more than one component in this image, and. And other limitation of, of single component images is that the checksum is only limited to CRC32. I mentioned that it's a good thing uh, for the for for checksum, but if it's CRC32, is a small chance that very small chance that uh, you know the image is corrupt, but the checksum is the same. So you know these are the limitations of having a fixed size uh, format. This is what a multi-component image looks like. So what, what they did is they went ahead and added a little table here in the, in the payload uh, uh, that tells you more about uh, uh, the different, uh, actually this table is null terminated. So you can have like multiple uh, sections in that. And the way it works is, uh, you know, because of null termination, you know where the table ends. So uh, you know we you know what the next component is and you know its size so you can in that fashion you can embed multiple components that way so this is how that works so I, you know i find this approach very uh, uh, ugly because uh, first of all it's like predefined all over in the code that you know the kernel is, has to be in this location and the ram disk it has to be the first thing here and the device tree has to be here it's not the whole notion of it's not flexible, you know. So the code has things like uh, you know, uh, it makes all sorts of assumptions that the kernel is at index one, and you know the code is really messy uh, because of that. Uh, from what I observed, so it's fixed mapping of ID to component type, uh, predefined, you know, all that stuff. So it's kind of messy. So. So like I was saying, um, yeah. So the the good thing was that now you can have you have single image that you can just DHCP and it has all the, all the all the good stuff in it. You know you don't have to to. So that that was a good thing that that happened because of the, this image type. And yeah, again, like uh, there's no. Though you could embed multiple components, you can't really have like multiple kernels in in, a, in, a, in an image. So you can't have an uh, asymmetric multiprocessing system where we have two uh, two different cores and you want to load different kernels. So you, that was not possible, even with this. Uh, so so the the same disadvantage is you know that the the IDs were hard coded, uh, you know and. Associating numbers instead of names is is not a good thing. Like you need to have, you need to make it like a little more. The code has to be cleaner. You know, if you have IDs in the code, it's quite sad, and uh, so it's difficult to maintain. You know, code is very very horrible, and so you know, it's like uh, very inflexible. Basically, that's that's what I'm trying to say here. Okay. So 
So again, limited support for only these three components. Uh, multiple kernels cannot be represented, and it doesn't scale for future designs. No support for stronger checksums, stuff like that. So, 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 that, so all, the, all that I was talking about till now was the, the existing uh, UMH formats and their limitations and all the disadvantages I showed you. And it was good 15 years back, but now it's time to move on and use something more powerful and uh, you know, something more flexible using existing tools. So, so I'm going to talk about uh, tree-like structures to represent some of these images. I'm going to talk about the, you know, like, like basically uh, what, what a tree-like structure can add. You know, you can have a more flexible, uh, flexible way of representing a kernel, like in the form of a tree. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have something like this, uh, you know, to, to represent an image however you want it with the fields placed wherever you want? as long as you have those fields somewhere. And you, know, you can arbitrarily arrange nodes uh, in a tree, move them around. Trees can have properties. Properties can even be binary images if you want it. So a lot of flexibility added you know, because of, like, if, you, if, if this fixed size structure could somehow be made more flexible, and trees are a nice way of, of uh, possibly representing it. So, so if we're going to talk about a little bit about device tree, what it is and uh, how it has been used uh, for fit. So device tree is basically a, a structure to describe hardware. I, I think most people here know, know that. So the idea is that instead of hard coding everything in, in the kernel uh, about the platform, you, you know, you ha have all that data, uh, you know, have all that code converted to data and actually use that data to represent, uh, to tell the kernel more about uh, what, what the platform you're booting on is about. Uh, you know the details, and that kind of makes the code a lot cleaner. So the problem now is that uh, now you have all this, these device tree sources uh, that is not code, but it's actually data, but it's still in the kernel tree, and uh, you know that's adding a lot of churn. And uh, I'm sure those who attended Olaf's talk yesterday heard him about talking about moving it out of the tree and kernel tree and stuff like that. Anyway, regardless, it keeps the code clean, and uh, you know there's been a lot of uh, a uh, lot of effort uh, in that direction convert drivers to use device tree instead of using you know these hard coded platform data kind of stuff so device tree so that's what device tree is about uh, you know it has a uh, basically describes cpus peripherals memory all that configuration kernel output which serial port kernel parameters all that kind of stuff can be embedded in a nice tree like format so so this has nothing to do with the image formats that I'm talking about. This is just what device tree is and how it, how it has been used. So the question is, can we reuse the device tree? So it's already in use in the kernel, so why not just reuse it? So tools that build the tree are already a part of the kernel. So we want to take existing tools and kind of use that in a, in a more mini, in, a, in a useful way. And device tree compiler recently also has, uh, has, has got support for uh, Embedding even binaries inside of uh, node properties, uh, you know, property values. So, so all this good stuff is already there in the kernel tree. You know, we're not really talking about adding anything new. And so, so uh, Marian, uh, I think, I believe in 2008, he uh, came up with this whole idea, you know, for PowerPC. And the idea was actually it emerged because they wanted stronger checksums. And UMH has fixed field for CRC32. And you want to do MD5 or SHA or something like that. And there's just not have no way to, to do it. So, so the idea was, OK, let's Wolfgang and Marianne and all these guys got together and they decided, OK, let's come up with something that's more flexible. And that's where they, they invented FIT. And it really uses, uh, uh, makes use of device tree to build a tree nodes. Uh, correspond to image components. So now your RAM disk is a node inside the tree, or you know, uh, your uh, device tree blob itself is a node inside inside a tree, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So it's perfect use for multiple multiple component images. You know, like uh, you know, embed multiple kernels, multiple device trees, multiple RAM disks, multiple things you haven't even thought of. And you know, this format can be adapted to pretty much anything that you. You, that you want to do and that you, you can't think of now, but you might want to do in the future. So, um, so th this was the board that had uh, the first support added and needed stronger checksums. 
and uh, like I was saying, all these details. So, so any questions on so far? Okay. So, uh, so, the, so I did some research, and I found that quite a few users are already there in U-boot, uh, in U-boot users. Uh, so you have these uh, eight-core uh, processor uh, boards, expedite, uh, you know, and they use they use FED quite a lot. In fact, all the XCS boards use FED quite a lot, uh, and, and most most if not all Freescale boards that I've seen in the in the U-boot sources use it. You know, here are a bunch of other boards. Uh, uh, I won't bore you with the details, but um, you know, there's Neo Free Runner from OpenMoco, the Zinc, uh, Freescale again here. And yeah, this is very interesting. Samsung Chromebook, actually, they do a secure boot. And uh, they are planning to use FIT to kind of store cryptographic signatures inside of the image, image tree. And I also have a little bit of a demo on, on, a, on my favorite uh, platform, BeagleBone. Uh, I'll be showing you, like I, re I just added support for that, so I'll be showing, I'll just show you the logs. Uh, I try not to do demos because demos usually go wrong at the wrong time. I mean, uh, you know, uh, so I, I so I have the logs of what I did, and uh, uh, I'll sh I'll show you those details. And x86 support is not really there, but Simon uh, again has posted some patches on the U-boot mailing list for x86 support, and they are being reviewed, from what I know. And then uh, you have this soft CPU uh, from Zydings as well that uh, actually uses FIT. So. So coming back to the ZImage hacks to support appending DT, and this was one of our main points uh, uh, to, to, to you know convince all the maintainers that we really want to do this. Is that uh, it's kind of a really a messy way to uh, you know it has a bunch of drawbacks uh, of appending a DT. So I think I brought up these points earlier, but I'll say them again. So there's no kernel support for this. You have out of tree hacks. Kernel build support, uh, runtime support is there, but there's no build support. Um, you have hacks floating around that you have to apply to actually embed a DT, uh, you know. And sometimes I, I do like hundreds of iterations, and I don't want to like uh, keep like sometimes my device tree is just fixed. I don't want to pass it, you know, copy it from somewhere and pass it. I want it to be in my image. I want to build kernel and device tree all in the same image. That's not possible. You need out of tree hacks in the kernel code to actually do that build. Um, and again, it makes it a single platform. You can embed more than one device trees, uh, in, in, you know, even with this approach. And so, and yeah, this is the kernel config option you have to enable in order for the kernel to actually work. So there is runtime support. When a kernel boots, it can detect that there is device tree appended to it, and it can do all that. But you have to enable this config option. So these are just details. Um, this is what the code looks like. You know, you basically cat the Z image with the device tree, and you output a new image. So it's very simple. You just slap both of them together, and you know that's what it looks like. So, so, um, so, uh, so while I talk about fit and how uh, how it can be used, I'm going to show you a little uh, demo uh, in the slides on. Uh, you know, I'll show you source code, and I'll show you different components inside the source code, and. Uh, yeah, I think we're a little short of time too, but I'll try to keep up. Um, I'll show you the source code. Show you how I, how I built the the actual uh, image. Uh, show you U-boot commands uh, that you can use to boot the image. Show you boot log after it boots, stuff like that. And so my first demo is going to be a, a, a single kernel, single device tree blob. Uh, we're building an image out of these two, and it's quite simple. Uh, so that's the first demo. Now for this experiment, I used U-boot, the latest one at the time, and uh, uh, kernel 3.8. So everybody knows the Beagle board. So, uh, so this is what source, so the sources look like. Uh, so, so basically, you have a device tree source version you have to specify. This is for backward compatibility. And uh, then you have the whole tree here. And you describe the image and, um, you know, uh, this is the image node. Uh, you start with images node, and then you have to uh, put a kernel. You have to have this kernel at kernel node here that tells you about the about what image you want to embed inside your inside the kernel node. So this actually gets converted to a binary binary property. 
Then you have a bunch of other fields, you know. You can specify them flexibly up and down wherever you want. You're not limited by a fixed size header. And this is the most interesting thing. Like you can actually embed hashes, multiple hashes, for even stronger checksums on your kernel. Uh, you know, so so this node is mandatory uh, kernel. So you have an images parent node, and then you have multiple sub nodes. The sub nodes tell you uh, what the different components are. So so you have first component is kernel. Then uh, I guess I have in this demo I have the next component is device tree, the device tree blob. So you can specify which device tree blob you want to embed, and this gets converted to a, a binary property. And again, you have the same hashes and all that on the device tree blob component of the image. Okay, so so then you end the images, the parent images node that encapsulates all these all these little images. You end it with this, and then you have a configuration node that uh, so configuration based concept is that you have different configurations and you can tell you can uh, say that for this configuration I want to take this kernel this bootloader this uh, device tree this ram disk kind of and boot them all together so it's a nice way of you know you can just tell you boot 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 this configuration and it will just take take these components out of the images out of all these image nodes and it will boot it together. So it's very, very clean, uh, you know, the way it is. Then I built the image using MK image, so very simple, you know, no fancy properties or anything, just simple. And, you know, if you look at the kernel sources, MK image is like three lines. So this is just so simple. So I built it like this, and then this is the output of the build. And this is the, this is the device, this is, the, you know, the ITB, so to speak, image tree blob. Uh, that came out of the image tree sources that I just showed you. So, so you can see the ch checksums and stuff. It shows you, you know, the SHA and all that that has been embedded inside the image already. So, uh, the so MK image uh, computed those uh, values for you and stored it in the image. Then, then we just boot it. So, booting it is very simple. Just I don't have to pass anything to boot him. I just no device tree location or anything. I just say boot him and it just it just works. So I copy the ITB I just built and I just boot it. So, so and this is these are the boot logs of what it looks like. U boot uh, you know detects it's a fit and it, it looks at the checksums, it verifies it, makes sure everything is okay. Then uh, it does the same thing for device tree. This is not even possible with uh, the uh, you know old U image. I mean we didn't have concept of checksum since for device tree blobs itself. So you know it does even that and uh, loads loads the uh, you know kernel and the device tree from the load load address properties I just showed you in the in the sources and then it just starts. So 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 it's quite nice you know quite elegant uh, flexible. So in the second demo, I'm going to introduce a RAM disk. So now I added a RAM disk to here. And uh, I, I don't specify any load address. Just set it to zero so that you would copies it wherever it likes. Make, you know, and I, I just added uh, you know, one hash here for the RAM disk. Um, and I created a new configuration in the second demo. Uh, this doesn't work. OK. So yeah, it's too bright. So uh, the second configuration says that, OK, I want to add a RAM disk to the mix, mix as well, not only a kernel and a device tree. So it uses this node that I just added here to, to uh, you know, it uh, kind of encapsulates all that together. So then I just build it the same way, and it, you know, it created the new configuration I'm showing you in blue here. Pretty standard, um, and then I just then I boot it. So this time uh, I want to boot the recovery configuration. So it's quite simple. I just have to pass the configuration name that I had here, recovery conf. I just pass it to the bootm command, and it it takes the kernel ram disk and device tree from the fit image, and it it boots it together. So so I actually uh, you know booted it and. There you can see the the new uh, updates, and it added loaded the RAM disk as well. And now I'm inside of a nice RAM disk uh, file system, and you know I can you know uh, I don't need the 
an SD card or anything anymore. So, so th this is one of the other uh, applications. I think it will be very useful to have something like this. Um, and then there are more use cases for it, like other than this, like just like what I showed you. I mean, you can have two kernel images, and uh, one kernel image can be for production. Where you t optimize it, uh, turn on all the optimization flags, and make it compact and all that. Uh, and then you can have one for your own debugging where you would turn on everything, all the tracing infrastructure and all that. So, and you can embed both these kernels in the same image. And you can have multiple configuration nodes that say that this is a debug configuration node and I'd like you to, boot, I'd like you to pick the debug kernel. Um, and likewise for production. So, you know, there's another application for that. Uh, so, and the, 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 the other big application where this will be useful and I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I've been writing code uh, to, to kind of have multiple device tree blobs embedded in the same image, so kind of make it like a multi-platform kernel image. And uh, you have different configuration nodes for different boards and uh, you'd pass the, you'd, you'd have the right device tree blob uh, in, in each of those configuration nodes. Uh, so you can really have one image uh, that kind of supports multiple boards it's kind of a nice way to do, do that. And the, uh, what you would ca can potentially do is read the WEPROM or s figure out from switches or something that it's this kind of board and you know that I need to, uh, you know, it's board X or something and I need to boot configuration X. So something like that. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, this is another big use case. Uh, Simon Glass, I was saying added fit support for his push patches for x86, you know, it's like um, really useful. Like this is something that wasn't even thought of when Fit was invented a few years back. And he went ahead and added uh, signatures, uh, you know, that he, you know, the value of which is computed by using a private key and he signed those images and embedded multiple signatures, you know, inside of the, inside of the image itself. So that's really useful. This is something that is not possible at all with the existing U-boot image formats. <coughs> it's not at all uh, possible to do this. So it's really flexible. Something that wasn't even thought of can be added to the uh, to the to U-boot U image format, and you know. And uh, then he <laughs> then he went ahead and added even more uh, security support. So so the idea was that you you have a kernel and you have a signature for that. And that's verified, and everything is good. And then you have all these other components, and everything has signatures. But you have, don't have signatures for configuration. So now somebody can easily uh, hack the device tree and uh, boot some random configuration that you haven't even thought of, and that exposes a lot of uh, holes and stuff. So even then, added signatures to you know even co configuration. So now you boot can verify that the configuration node itself has not been tampered with. So stuff like that. And uh, this is another use case. It still hasn't been done, but we're discussing. I was discussing with Simon that uh, you know, for this is perfect for uh, AMP configurations where uh, you know the P2020 uh, Freescale uh, SoC, uh, which is which is what the P2020 RDB board is based on. Uh, it uh, it's a perfect uh, use case because right now what it does is it takes two different kernel images, uh, TFTPs them. Uh, you know, that's how they, they've written it. And the TFTPs, the device tree blobs separately, and then it, um, you know, takes each of these uh, kernels and uh, manually loads it into each of the, for each of the processors and uh, it passes the right device tree blob uh, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, magic that has to be done to make this kind of thing work. And this is a very good use case uh, for FIT, uh, you know, where, you can have embed those kernels directly in the image itself and then just have a configuration that possibly tells you which core to load what kernel on and, and what device to blob to pass it. And it can be done much better in, in, in a nice uh, little uh, you know, tree than doing it the way they do it today. So that's so what I thought was a very, very good uh, application of that. And uh, yeah, I've seen the upgrade procedures for devices also. Some vendors want to just, uh, you know, distribute a single image and they want to give you tons of components, to, uh, you know, 
customers can use them in a, a different way and break their boards and stuff or whatnot. So, so I guess this can be applied to this kind of use case too. So, so a lot of uh, future work and challenges. Uh, so we need a we need a simple way to extend the. So we already have the DTBs target in the kernel, which what it does is say make DTBs and it builds DTB uh, device tree blobs for all the uh, uh, platforms that you have configured. So you know they, they already do that. So why not just take all that and uh, uh, reuse uh, some of that? You know, and uh, at the same time build a, a tree itself that contains all the device tree uh, device tree blobs. So there was a lot, very difficult to accept these patches. Uh, two three years back, uh, patches were posted for PowerPC, and they were Grant likely uh, knacked them, and it was uh, he had his own reasons, and you know. But recently, it has become easier to uh, you know. There's been more. It has this idea has been more welcoming. Uh, you know, now that we're moving to a multi-platform kernel and stuff like that. So, uh, so that. So it's much easier. So that's what is encouraging me more to to pursue this. And yeah, gen generally, the other challenge in the community is like, if people don't use the word, they just hate it. I don't know why. <laughs> I've seen that a lot. Like, uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, U-Word uh, is considered to be uh, uh, considered to be uh, something that's very bloated and uh, you know all that. And I really think that it's not the case. You can make it as small as you want to or as big as you want to. And it's a good thing that it has so many drivers because you can boot in so many different ways. So that is, again, a very debatable uh, uh, topic. Uh, so that's where that is at. And you would uh, currently, uh, yeah, so, so this has been breaking things all over. Uh, I think Tony posted some patches, uh, I guess. and. Uh, uh, you know the whole move to the multi-platform uh, uh, kernel, right? Uh, so that has, we have seen breakages uh, 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 related to that. Uh, you know, and where where the 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 U-boot image itself is not built with a load address, and if if you didn't do that, uh, it would break. So and even fit images would are, were breaking. So I have a little patch I wrote yesterday night that fixed that problem. So. I'm able to boot a, a fit image without specifying a load address at all. So, uh, you know that. So that's so I have proof of concept that you don't need a load address to boot a fit image. You can just boot it in place. So that works. And I've seen uh, 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 I, I've seen uh, the other challenge I've seen is like crypto operations are very slow from you boot. Still looking into it, but it takes like a long time to do a SHA and to verify it, and so it adds a lot of time to the boot. So possibly use hardware accelerators uh, to possibly speed up those crypto operations and stuff like that. So that's possibly something I would like to look at at some point to speed this up. But uh, generally, yeah, the, this format, it's going to be a quite a challenge to accept it and ha add this support to the kernel. Uh, to the kernel tree, and I think it's a it's a good idea because the tools are already there that do this, you know, device tree compiler, all that is in the kernel. So I think uh, it's not it's not that bad, and just adding this is. So we're, we're having discussions on the mailing list, and uh, we have a huge uh, uh, a thread going on on uh, on uh, on on this topic, and uh, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thread, and uh, so let's see where that goes. So. So any questions? Huh.